chairman of the executive committee of the Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge, I'd like to call on Brother Calhoun Price to make the presentation to the Kingfish for his 20 year service to our great lodge. Brother Calhoun. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Brother Amos. <laughs> <clears throat> Friends and dear brothers, we is all devil here to do honor to one of our most beloved members. You and me has always considered him one of our greatest friends. And I know that you all has loved him as much as I have. Right. So now, as we is all devil here, Preparing to lower this wonderful friend into his last resting place. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Excuse me, that's the wrong speech. I uh, guess I forgot the other one. Uh, wouldn't this one be all right if you left out the berry and stuff? Yeah, it sounded good until you started to lower in me. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, boys, I'll just say what's in my heart. Brothers, the kingfish here has been the head of this distinguished lodge for the past 20 glorious years. And during that time, we has watched him grow with the lodge like a young sapling. <laughs> How well we all can recall 20 years ago when the kingfish was nothing but a loafer. <laughs> he never knew where he was going to sleep from one week to the next. But now, he is an inspiration. He is a guiding light. And I know that the feeling we have toward our honorable leader is best expressed by a quotation I'm sure you all know so well. Uh, 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 here it is right here. Once upon a time, there was a traveling salesman who met a farmer's... Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that was from the smoker last week. Yeah. You're safer with the rest in place stuff, Calvin. Uh, no, I think I'll just omit the speech and then... Go on and make the presentation. <clears throat> My dear brother Kingfish, it is a pleasure on this auspicious occasion when my heart is filled to overflowing to present to you as a token of our esteem this brand new genuine electric clock. And here it is. My beloved brothers of the Lodge, in the words of that famous poet, Ralph Walnut Emerson, you all have earned my infernal gratitude. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good Good morning, George. Good morning, Mama. Morning, George. What that you got there, George? Well, honey, you're going to be very proud to know that last night the Supreme Council of the Lodge presented me with this clock to show what they think of me. Yeah, well, I wouldn't shake it if I was you. There might be a bomb inside. <laughs> I'll have you to know that they give me this clock for the 20 years' work I've done for the Lodge. This clock is worth $8.50. Well, if you ask me, I think you've been overpaid. I don't know what you need a clock for anyway. You ain't never been no place. You ain't going no place. And if you was going someplace, it wouldn't make no difference to nobody whether you got there or not in the first place. And to think I give up rats and alligators to marry into this family. <laughs> mm, this thing got a second hand in everything here. something jammed up in there. <laughs> they give me a bum clock and it won't work. Uh, well, that makes two things around here that don't work. <laughs> there you is, Kingfish. You see, the trouble was right there. They put too many wheels in the car. <laughs> Andy, 
This is a Lucius clock I ever done heard. Yeah, well, them wheels got room to move around in there now. Come on, let's try. Maybe this is one of them new improved clocks. Not only tells time, but sends out smoke signals, too. Then uh, this clock ain't gonna work. I just got a lemon here, that's all. It wasn't no good to start with. Where'd you buy the thing? Well, uh, I think the box is still in your desk there. got a thing to worry about. This clock got a lifetime guarantee to it. Oh, it is, huh? Yeah, see here, if this clock got any uh, mechanical defects, they will cheerfully give me a new one. Yeah, I had a bill here. Uh, better call the man up. Now listen, mister. The storekeeper told me to call the Java. The Java told me to call the distributor. The distributor told me to call you. Now you telling me to call the manufacturer. Uh, yeah. Where's that little key to that? Yeah, I got a pencil. <laughs> okay. We'll go over there. You know the thing I can't understand, Kingfish, is how all these people can make money out of a clock that don't even work. It is a mystery, Andy, but we got to go over to the manufacturing company. I tell you what, I'll get Lightning to drive us over there in his car. We got to go to the Compo Manufacturing Company to see the manager, Mr. Cartwright. more data on how the Army wishes us to convert from civilian work to defense work. Well, it looks like we're really rolling here. Little did I know when I got a job in the clock business that I'd end up making top secret stuff for the government. You know, Mr. Cartwright, the Army's very upset about this new electronic altimeter clock you've been making. You know, the first model had a lot of bugs in it. They had to reject it. Well, now let's be fair about it. They wanted an altimeter for a guided missile. They also wanted a clock in it to determine the rate of ascent. Now, Major, you know you don't knock these things out overnight. The most important thing is, will this new model work? I'm sure this new model will satisfy him 100%. I'm having a couple of mechanics come over from our Jersey plant to give it its final check. When's all this going to happen? Well, the two men should be here shortly. I left word to the guard outside to send them right in so they can go on up to the laboratory and make the final test. <laughs> well, I'll be very interested in seeing the results that we get from these two mechanics. Hey, look at that, Kingfish. You got a soldier out in front here with a gun. See, they really fighting off that lifetime guarantee, ain't they? <laughs> Hulk! Hulk! Hulk, I'll shoot! Look, Andy, they ain't but $8.50 involved here, and I don't see no reason why anybody should get shot over it. Come on, let's go. Say, what are you two trying to do here? Oh, never mind, never mind. Just forget about Mr. Cartwright and the whole thing. We'll check on the clock later. Oh, you're here to check on that clock for Mr. Cartwright. Yeah. Sorry, fellas, you can go right in. So first go on your right after you get into the building. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Andy, the wholesaler must have told him we was coming. But I'm still wondering what that fella doing out there with that gun. Well, with the bum clocks that this place puts out, I guess they need protection. Listen, we're not sending out this electronic altimeter clock until it's been thoroughly tested. This is a top secret job. Uh-huh. Yeah? Well, I'm having a couple of mechanics come over here from our Jersey plant. And if the clock stands up under 60 degree below zero temperature test, you'll have it by tomorrow. Right. Mr. Cartwright? Yes? 
Well, we are here about the clock. The fellow out front said you were expecting us. Oh, yes, yes, of course. The clock's all ready for you upstairs. Hey, you knew that person was a lemon, all right. Oh, there's no use in discussing that one. This one is perfect, which you'll find out after you test it. I'm glad to hear. Pardon me. <laughs> you know what the man said, Andy? Yeah. Said the clock's all ready for us. You know, I like the way this firm does business. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they must think we are two really important guys, all right, the way they're taking care of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Andy, they sure got a nice plant here, ain't they? Yeah, these people know what they're doing around here, all right. Okay, you can come in here now and take your clothes off. <laughs> Andy, did you hear the man say something? I heard something there, Kingfish, but I know we didn't hear what I thought we heard. <laughs> Come in here and take your clothes off. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. for protruding, but did you say something about clothes? That's right. Now, come in this dressing room and put these clothes on. <laughs> now, look, mister, we don't mind playing Buck Rogers and all that stuff, but we are here about a clock. I'm taking my orders from somebody else, and you've got to take them from me. Now, put these clothes on, and let's get started. But, mister, all we is here for is... I know what you're here for, but you're not going upstairs till you put these clothes on like everybody else. Do you mean that everybody else put these on here? Well, of course they do. <laughs> you know, Andy, taking advantage of this lifetime guarantee ain't as easy as a lot of people think it is. <laughs> Right, can we get the clock now? Yes, that's fine. Let's go upstairs. <laughs> All right, men, step right in here. And I'll go and get the clock for you. Wait a second, Mr. Cartwright. What's the idea for putting us in the deep freeze here? You know a better way to test a clock at 60 degrees below zero? 60 degrees below zero? And I don't see why they're testing the clock at this temperature. I know my bedroom gets a little chilly at night, but it ain't gonna stop new clock. <laughs> Holy mackerel, Kingfish. It is 60 degrees below zero in here. And if this is something. In this temperature, our blood life will turn to service. Well, I don't know why I got to go through all this. This is your clock. Well, now, look here, Me We come this far together. Let's stick it out. Well, all I know, I was freezing. Oh, Andy, you're making the thing worse than what it is. Now, Andy, uh, instead of these freezing coils, just imagine, we got a big bonfire right over here and a roller in front of us here, right here in the back of it, and then you'll feel warmer. Do you feel the heat from the fire, Andy? How can I feel it and you stand right in front of it hogging it all? Oh, well then, come on around back of me and get over here on this side. I can't. How come? I might back into the furnace. <laughs> Here's the clock. And remember, it's got to be tested for a full 30 minutes. But, uh, 30 minutes? Wait a minute, Kingfish. If they're testing this clock they're giving you, how come we got to stay in here with it? Well, Andy, if you've been reading the Wall Street Journal, you would know that that's the way big business operates. Oh. Come on, we better keep moving here. Yeah. Andy, hey, we'd have been better off if we had let that fellow out front shoot us. Andy, I said... Andy, Andy. Oh, that mackerel, something done happened to him. Oh, me. He done turned his head too fast and it done snapped off. Andy, Andy, speak to me. What do you want, Kingfish? Andy, tell me where your head is so I can talk to it. Yeah, I am. Oh, what a fright you gave me. I thought you'd been decapitated. I get out of here. Yeah, I had enough of this. <laughs> I 
I tell you, I just left the room for a few minutes, and when I came back, they were gone, and so was the electronic altimeter. You government men will just have to track them down. Well, Andy, it was a tough struggle, but we at least got another new clock. Yeah, well, let's open the box and see if this one works. Yeah, uh, let's take a look here. Hmm, you sure wrapping them better. Yeah, we got to take it out of the bag, yeah. That's a funny looking clock. Uh, maybe they're giving us a different model. Oh, uh, wait a minute. This ain't a compo clock. It's made by somebody else. A fellow named Al uh, Timida. Well, how you like that, Andy? This one broke too. It ain't got but one hand on it. Well, maybe it's supposed to be like that. Uh, can you tell the time on it there? Well, as near as I can figure, it's uh, 10 minutes to 700 feet. After all we done been through, they give me another bum clock. Well, uh, you gonna take this one back again, Kingfish? I just say not, Andy. Anybody take one of these back is crazy, unless they was an Eskimo. Oh. <laughs> we really wasted the morning, all right. Come on, Andy. Let's go down to the beam and drown our troubles in a cup of coffee. Okay. What am I carrying this part? Ain't no good. Hmm. This looks like a good speedometer. And that's the best description you can give me of these two fellows, eh, Carly? Well, yes. I only saw them for a few minutes. Yeah, I think with the serial number on this clock they left here, we'll be able to trace them. You know, this may be the beginning of something really big. You think so? Yeah, so when we find them, they'll wish they never started interfering with Uncle Sam. Well, we can find a George Kingfish Stevens. Uh, yes, uh, here right inside there. <laughs> like I was saying, Andy, the next time you boys want to present me with something for my service to the lodge, just give me the cash. I had one man who don't like no trouble. Yeah, well, the only thing is, uh, if... Yes, sir? Are you George Kingfish Stevens? Yeah, I am George Kingfish Stevens. What can I do for you? Uh, what is it, Kingfish? A couple of elks? I don't know, Andy. Uh, excuse me a minute till I put on my glasses here. My irises have been twitching on me here lately. <laughs> Yeah, we is. Let's see what we got here. Government men? Well, Kingfish, I'll drop down and see you again sometime. Wait a minute. We want to talk to you, too. We want to find out about a certain electronic altimeter clock you took from the Compo Manufacturing Company. Now, where is it? The altimeter clock? Now, look, mister, I admit that we took a clock, but I thought it was no good, just like the first one. So I threw it in the ash can right out front there. Benson, have a look in the ash can. Right. You know, this comes under the heading of espionage, and if you fellas don't come clean, you're in for plenty of trouble. Now, wait a minute, mister. I didn't have nothing to do with nothing. The kingfish here asked me to go to the clock factory with him. Is that right, Stevens? Yeah, that's right, uh, but the thing is... But you're the brains, eh? I wonder if you could be an innocent accomplice in this thing. Uh, yes, sir. I'd be glad to. <laughs> yeah, I'd be glad to, too. Uh, I said, partner. Look, you two. It isn't there. Well, you heard the man. All right, now, tell me where it is. Now, wait a minute, mister. Well, hi you there, fellow. I see you got company. Oh, Calhoun, it's not glad to see you. Yeah. You got to help us, Calhoun. We're in trouble. In trouble, eh? Well, <clears throat> what's the charge? Espionage. Espionage? Why, that's a trumped up charge. These men, they never started a fire in their life. Now, listen here, you. I don't know who you are, but I'm warning you not to try to interfere in this. Not interfere? Let me tell you something. You two men can't come barging in here and start no false accusation against these two honest, patriotic, innocent gentlemen. After all, this is a free country. What are they paying taxes for that they would pay if they was paying? Ain't it? I told you once before to keep out of this. You just give me one good reason why I should keep out of this. I tell you, this country ain't going to be safe until the average citizen goes about his business. See, uh, 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 u
I tell you, this country ain't gonna be safe until these two crooks is behind bars. Now, wait a minute, Calhoun. Get your hands off of me. I don't talk to no traitors. I'm asking you for the last time, where is the clock? Honest, mister, we don't know. Well, in that case, Stevens, you'll leave us no choice. We're going to have to take you down to headquarters. Headquarters? Oh, no, no. Well, mister, please, we ain't done nothing. And uh, wait till Sapphire and old Ironside find out about this. <laughs> Who is Sapphire and old Ironside? Now, wait a minute, mister. Don't come dragging them into this, please. You know, this may be a bigger operation than it looks like. We want to meet Sapphire and old Ironside. Come on, oh, Stephen. Have Come mercy. On. Please. Come on. Please. Please. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. I said, what do it? Come on. Listen, the United States ain't lost a war yet, so don't mess with success. <laughs> we haven't got all day. Come on. George, this is so embarrassing. Yeah, your mama acting like a full-time loser. <laughs> Come on, will you? I don't know why they need guided missiles when they've got her. <laughs> will you please? Come on. All right, everybody in the car here. Listen, Baldy. This world is too small for both you and me. We're gonna miss you around here. <laughs> Huh? Did you hear the awful news? The government got the kingfish and then the women, too. Yeah? What's this all about, brother? Ian? Well, well, Calhoun told me about it, but I ain't got time now like that. See, will you drive me over to the police station? My cab's in the shop. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'll move this out of your way, yeah? yeah There's a new speedometer I've been trying to put in. I hope it works all right. A new speedometer? Uh-huh. Hey, wait a minute, Lightning. Huh? Where'd you get this thing? Uh, kingfish throw it in the trash can over there, and I dug it out. Holy smoke, this is just the thing they've been looking for. They're gonna put the boys in the clear. It will. I don't know what they want it for. It ain't no good. According to this thing, we 14,000 feet above sea level. Oh, come on, like it. Let's get <laughs> Well, Mr. Jones, we've checked your story, and everything seems to tie in. Oh, yes, I was telling the truth, all right. You see, this fella Lightning thought that thing was a speedometer. Yes, well, your friends will be released immediately, and I'll see to it they get home. Oh, thank you, sir. Look, Mr. Benson, he's going to wind up with you sooner or later, so why don't you just keep him? Oh, no, I think he'll be able to stay out of trouble this time for a while. Well, goodbye, folks. Mama, I told you a thousand times the whole thing wasn't my fault. <laughs> Yeah, but you sure is lucky that Amos see that thing in Lightning's car. Well, all I know is, I was upstairs in my own room, minding my own business, and the next thing I knew, here I was mixed up in the government. Now look, Mama, George is right. The whole thing wasn't his fault. They gave him a defective clock. Now let's all go in and settle down and have a cup of coffee. Come on. Well, it was right nice of Mr. Cartwright bring me down a brand new clock in place of the other one. Yeah, so you ended up ahead after all. Yeah, we can keep it on the disc right here. Imagine them giving me another clock that don't work. Well, maybe this will explain it, dear Mr. Stevens. Due to the fact that you have ignored your past due electrical bill, your current has been turned off since 9 o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. 